Well, Daphne Kane from Garth is joining us for her election interview. Um, no surprises there, really, although you did kind of hold back. You were thinking you may or may not, but you, you've always been definite, haven't you? You were going to stand? It's always been my intention to stand. Um, the timing of the announcement is a little bit tricky because actually I'm so busy with the legislative process coming up to the end of the year, some very heavy order papers for May and June and probably July. Actually, I don't know when I'm going to get out and campaign and do the day job thoroughly, but uh, that, that is my intention. Well, the interesting thing having someone that's stood and got in is we have a manifesto from five years ago. I, I'm not going to pick it to pieces, that's not for me, but <laughs> I want you to tell us how you think you've done and have, how much have you delivered of what you promised. Well, I haven't looked at it specifically because I, obviously in my, in my announcement I put what my current priorities are. Um, but I think I delivered a fair bit of it mm. and there are some things working on behind the scenes. Um, I think one of the things was 2P, um, which is better legislation for employment protection. But actually working within the Department for Enterprise, I am fully aware that there is a commitment to making better legislation for workers generally, perhaps not um, lifting over a very complex, enormous piece of legislation um, wholesale, but building around um, all kinds of improvements for workers, such as um, equal parental rights to parental leave, um, and just modernising a little bit what the Isle of Man offers to make us equally, if not more, attractive than other jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. What's it been like for the last five years, then? Let's try that, because, you know, you go in and you, you know more than probably most people, to some degree anyway, more than others, about what the, it entailed. What was it like for you? Um, well, the first few years were pretty much as expected. Um, the, the last couple of years, nobody could have expected on announcing or, you know, this the, the pandemic has been a game changer over everything. We knew Brexit was coming. Mm -hmm. um, to have the double whammy of Brexit and a pandemic, um, I think the Isle of Man has done exceptionally well. But I think that there are particularly social inequalities and hardship coming up the line that we really need to address in the next five years. So you're going knocking on doors now. What is what are you saying to them? What's the, what's the, what's the standout things? Well, standout for me would be environment, infrastructure, roads. We've got environment. We've got. It's okay. always been. I, I was told that my manifesto last time had the most uh, environmental policies contained within it, mm. and it still remains. Um, ever since I tabled the first um, climate emergency um, oh. <laughs> debate, that um, mm. was then the the government announced uh, just previous to that. Um, it has always been um, something. I think that green environmental policies now are mainstream, and I just don't think the Isle of Man has made enough progress. Well, you fought a fair bit in the House, haven't you, with uh, Mr. Boot and others like him for more movement, I think. Well, yes, we have the Climate Citizens Forum, and we know there are some policies coming down the line. Um, but we spent an awful lot of time, or the department did, consulting on the climate change bill. Um, but actually, what, what policies do we have now that are benefiting people that are, you know, retrofitting homes, um, support for putting in uh, electric charges for cars mm -hmm. and more and more um, availability of, you know, green, just green transition for all citizens. And there hasn't been enough, to my mind, no, nowhere near enough progress in that area. Remind everyone what committees and what, what departments you were in and, and have done, because I know, you know the Children's Champion was obviously one in the past, but what yeah. else? Well, I was Children's Champion for two years, a post that I sought. It's the Chief Minister's Children's Champion, and I felt I had to resign when the remit narrowed to looked after children only and not all children. Mm -hmm. And I will be putting some, some things in my manifesto where what I would like to see in terms of better um, provision of all sorts of services for education and children generally. Um, but I've also been the political lead on Digital Isle of Man, um, a role I've, I've hugely enjoyed and benefited from. It's a real insight to see the uh, enterprise and innovation going on in that sector on the island. One which actually has weathered very well the pandemic and has adjusted to working from home and probably been in all the, all the sectors on the island that are doing well economically, probably one of the best. Mm -hmm. um, obviously on my parliamentary side, I brought forward two private members bills. Um, the first one, the No Fault Divorce Bill, and I'm hoping to hear very soon from the Minister for Home Affairs and Justice what progress there's been on um, implementing that. So I get frequent queries mm -hmm. every week from people, um, handfuls every month, saying, 
please can we apply for a no-fault divorce, when will it be available? Mm. Um, and my other one, of course, was a, a small amendment to the Council of Ministers. Um, um, how to fire on. the Chief Minister, is it how easier? To, how to have a vote of no confidence no, in, put, yes. in the Council of Ministers by a simple majority, and I'm very pleased that that's now gone off royal assent. I hope it will be in right. shortly. It's been interesting, though, and I, I, it's clearly no love has been lost between you and this Chief Minister, the outgoing one. Would you say you've learned how to deal with be more strong in next time around, stronger? Uh, well, no, I think I think that politically we're very different people. It's never been my way to be um, confrontational or adversarial. Mm. I think that there has to be, when you're on the back benches, your role is to scrutinise and to challenge government. Um, and I think I've done that pretty effectively. But back bench, you must have thought maybe your time was coming at some point to be you know, pushed up, made, in, made a minister, and this all-male... Comin of theirs? Well, this all male Comin, there's no possibility for advancement in this administration. No, not now. Clearly. But I would say there are some talented people, hopefully, that we'll see progress into the next House if they're re elected. What's your eye on what prize have you got if you oh. are successful? No, don't, don't <laughs> say you'll do what is asked, because I hate that, because okay. I think everyone says that. Well, you must have a very clear idea in your head what you'd like to do. I have. Right. And the areas I'm particularly interested in are social and environmental policies, making life better for people, for the island, for the environment. I think biodiversity is very important and obviously all the environmental um, schemes yeah. that need to come forward. So um, death for them. Um, environmental policies or home affairs or oh. social education side. Uh, but if I were the best candidate, then I would hope that I might be considered for that role. But the other side of me, I got accused of being a parliamentary process nerd when I studied <laughs> the, really? the, the week-long course, the year-long course at McGill <laughs> University, which was really brilliant eye-opener to um, beginning in a parliament, how the processes work, and probably one of my ambitions, wherever I end up, if I'm lucky enough to be re-elected, yeah. would be to look at modernising or evolving our parliamentary processes. And I, if, if not going into government, that now we have the new system where you're equally rewarded for the scrutiny side, I would think that maybe my background is in journalism and 20 years in civil service in PR and comms and customer service roles, mm -hmm. I would think that that would suit me very well for going on the scrutiny side or even to deputy speaker or, or that kind of role. Oh, so you have got ambitions. Congratulations. I'd love to hear someone <laughs> actually come out with something deputy speaker. But it would be, it would depend on what um, everyone else yes. is, if elected, what the mix is, who the chief minister well, is. Well, we're now in a position to say we've got a new one, whatever happens, because yeah. I couldn't ask that question particularly very well. Now we definitely know who's, uh, as we brought, uh, record this, there's two in the camp. Maybe there may be more, who knows. Have you got your mind and will you share with us who you'd like to be the chief minister? Um, well, I don't think it's down to two. I mean, I have huge admiration for Claire Barber. For instance, I, I think we have seen administrations around the world where Finland, New Zealand, where well, women... Well, being a minister first, do you think? Well, Howard Quayle had one year's experience of being a minister yeah. prior to this administration. Many, many members, particularly during the pandemic, have spent an enormous amount of time putting input behind the scenes on the restrictions, the regulations that are coming forward, dealing with the pandemic and the borders opening. But others, such as Claire Barber, has served unstintingly in the health department and in home affairs. So I would say is very well experienced to take on a role. And I don't think you should discount um, anybody who has served in this administration being a potential candidate if they wish to be mm. next time. How do you deal with the uh, local issues? I mean, there's so much in Garth going on, so many things. I mean, just the flooding in Laxey and all the business there. And and your lovely works. seawall. Sewage works, sewage yeah, processing. Sewage um, seawall coming, which they've yeah. now said may be set back from the but promenade. We've got nowhere, did we, in the last five years? Did we, really? Well, What's, I think... We're going to show I'm, for it. I've also got to ask, it's been a year this month since the Arab report, the independent review into the flood on the 1st October 2019. That came out a year ago. There were 10 very clear recommendations. I want to know what progress has been made on that because only last week we were out with the flood team from um, DOI now. Um, we were investigating very clearly the um, upper end cell hill up through to Axenfell. The um, flood possibilities, they are mapping all the sites of concern. They're going to do a modelling of the entire valley. I'm very happy to know that there's um, funding available for that. Could you done more this last five years though? I mean, has it been think, sluggish really? No, I think I think you're always frustrated. You always want to achieve more. Yeah. I think in terms of what I have put pressure on, the questions I've asked, um, for instance, a year before it happened, I was asking for a, an independent review of education. Mm. And I'm very pleased that that came forward. I think we have moved on strides, especially now when the um, research has just come out 
out about the additional education needs. I think the education department has had a seismic shift in culture and outlook and I'm really hoping that we'll see education on the island get back to how it was regarded and how it felt 10 years ago. And just to finish, would you now see yourself as a career politician on the basis you're standing for your, well it could be, then be 10 years of being I, a politician? I don't think of a, as a career politician no. and nobody, nobody Full -time can job, say, uh, it's, all, it's a full-time job got family. because everyone has different pressures on them yeah. and everybody has a certain bandwidth and of a certain amount you can contribute and actually the job you do so little time actually is available for your constituency issues the the major infrastructure and the I mean, health concerns, just access to general health and social care and the availability and the longer waiting list now because everything has been on hold for so long since COVID. There's all this in the mix. When actually a lot of the day job is going through pages and pages and pages of detailed, complicated clauses to bring in new laws for the island. And that is the primary role of a House of Keys member, as well as the policies that drive the island and your constituency issues, just to make life better for people.